Dr. Jennifer Dill, welcome to the program. It's so great to see you. Good to talk to you about a subject that I just think is so important today. We're going to talk all about e-bikes, your work with regard to e-bikes, how much fun they are, and uh, certainly the trends associated with them, along with this wonderful world of innovation that's going on around e-bikes, cargo bikes, all this great stuff. Again, welcome to the program, Jennifer Dale. Happy to be here. Uh, yes, and, and thank you so much again. As someone who spends their time researching different modes of transportation, whether it be trains or buses or automobiles, including bicycling and now e-bikes, what is it that is leading people more and more today to decide to branch out and try this new form of transportation in, in, in e-bikes and the world of e-bike riding? Yeah, thank you. What we have found, we've been doing um, surveys, national surveys of e-bike owners uh, back in 2017 and also before in 2013. And what we're finding is that people are riding e-bikes largely for the reasons why regular or standard bicycles don't really work for them. So, and that includes the physical exertion. So not wanting to arrive at your destination sweaty, or maybe you're, it's too far to get to work or shopping, et cetera. It's just too far to ride a regular bicycle. Also hills are really tough for a lot of people on a standard bike. And so those are some of the big motivations. Um, we do find it varies depending on the type of e-bike owners. So we, what we have found is um, e-bikes are really popular amongst older adults. So in our survey, 47% of our e-bike owners were aged 55 or older, and they're really interested in using e-bikes for recreation. They're really attracted to that having an easier ride, and often uh, that may go along with health um, issues that they may have as we all age. And on the other hand, younger uh, e-bike owners um, may be more motivated by replacing car trips and trying to reduce their impact on the environment. And then we find um, women are an increasing segment of e-bike owners. And they're really interested in addition to that sort of easier ride, are more attracted also to be able to maybe carry their kids or cargo, groceries, et cetera, on their e-bike, and that's motivating them. Yeah, yeah, I I, kind of, I have the cargo model. I, I'm not sure that my wife is really comfortable truly hopping on the back and, you know, <laughs> especially with me at the helm. I, I don't know if that's, <laughs> that, that might, that might be a little bit of a, of a, a stopper there for her, but, but nonetheless, um, the bike I have is a foldable bike. And so I wonder if you talk to us a little bit about some of the trends in purchasing. Are some of the bikes, the e-bikes that we're seeing just modifications of standard two-wheel two bicycles? Are they exclusively e-bikes in terms of their power uh, source and generation? Are trikes, you know, the tricycle type, are they more popular in my age group? I have a sense as to this, but I'd love to hear some of your thoughts about the research. Yeah, so definitely these days, so back in 2013, when we surveyed e-bike owners, uh, about half of them had actually converted a standard bike with a kit to an e-bike. In 2017, only 20% 20 of our e-bike owners had done that. So more and more people are purchasing, you know, e-bikes from the beginning. And more and more of those e-bikes really are designed as e-bikes. They are not just a motor added on to a standard uh, model of a bike. There's many companies out there that basically that's all they do is e-bikes and then they're really designed as an e-bike from the beginning. The other thing in, in the U.S. at least, most of the states have adopted a classification system for e-bikes, so how they're regulated. And most two of those classifications of e-bikes are what we call pedal assist or electric assist. In other yeah. words, you have to pedal for the bike to move. It will not go with the um, electric motor on its own. And those are capped at either 20 miles an hour or 28 miles an hour. And there is one classification that does have a throttle. So the bike would um, go without you pedaling, but that does uh, cap out at 20 miles an hour. Um, so. Thank you for that. I just think this is fascinating. All of this is just uh, really interesting stuff. Um, I think that the trends, uh, the future for e-bikes is really just uh, enormous. And, and you talked about 
some of the trends with regard to uh, the various models, uh, how they're powered, uh, the step downs, various state regulations. I wonder if you can talk a little bit about some of the trends in purchasing e-bikes and particularly some of the incentivi incentivization that's going on and some of the rebates that some of the states are doing, because I think that that will factor in uh, largely into how my audience views, you know, kind of they're taking this next step in purchasing an e-bike for themselves. Exactly. Uh, so at Portland State University, we are um, keeping an inventory of all sorts of incentive programs across the U.S., at least that are offered uh, to the public. And we're finding everything um, from rebates and um, at point of purchase or after the fact, um, e-bike lending programs, free e-bikes, tax rebates, all sorts of things. And these types of programs are really becoming popular and spreading and particularly going from the local level to the state level. At last count, we have found at least 70 active pilot or adopted programs in the U.S., mm -hmm. another 33 uh, proposed. And I think they really are important, particularly for lower income households, because um, e-bikes are not necessarily cheap, especially a high quality one. And the price of a typical e-bike ranges from about $1,000 to over $5,000. And so that incentive, which is um, often ranges from as low as $100 um, to over $1,500, depending on the style of bike, uh, can really make a difference in whether or not a household could afford to purchase one. Talk a little bit about the demographics of those of us who are purchasing e-bikes. Are there particular demographics that have just embraced the e-bike phenomenon more than others? Are there particular demographics that just are not interested and maybe not even going to be interested? What are your, um, you know, kind of research findings around the demographics of those of us who are interested in this uh, in this new world of e-bikes? I would say that the demographics demographics of people who are purchasing e-bikes is somewhat similar to standard bikes, but mm -hmm. e-bikes do expand the demographics a bit. So in our first survey back in 2013 of e-bike owners, um, only about 15% of those bikes were owned by women. And in 2017, we saw that number almost doubled uh, to 28%. So we're finding that it's expanding some of those demographics. We also found um, that uh, a large share of e-bike owners are uh, 55 or older, which contrasts with who we know rides regular or standard bicycles. So it is expanding um, the demographics into some groups that traditionally don't ride standard bicycles. In terms of geography, one thing that's really clear is that an e-bike does allow you to ride farther for the same amount of effort, which makes it, should make it more attractive in suburban or more rural locations. Let's talk for a second about the environment and sustainability, particularly in an era where so many of us are uh, interested in how our footprint is uh, being experienced by, by those of us around us with regard to the, the earth and the environment and ecology. What is it about e-bikes that are so appealing in terms of their sustainability and their ecological advantages? And how is it that um, your research has uh, unearthed uh, elements of this uh, sustainability aspect that is so important to us? What, what is it that you're finding about sustainability and, and the environment with respect to e-bikes? There's a lot of evidence out there that e-bikes really can be a solution to reducing carbon emissions and you know other negative effects um, from using private automobiles, um, gasoline-powered automobiles in particular. What we have found is that e-bike owners um, use their e-bikes for the types of things that they would be using a car for. So we found that, you know, over half of the trips that they make on an e-bike are to places like commuting, errands, shopping, et cetera. And they tell us that two thirds of those trips they would have made in a personal car if they hadn't ridden their e-bike. So we are seeing the e-bikes are substituting uh, for more polluting modes of transportation. 
Um, and they're also allowing people to use e-bikes for longer trips, trips that they normally wouldn't uh, ride a regular bicycle for. We're also seeing a lot of health benefits. Uh, there, I think there's a myth out there that e-bikes are cheating and you don't get health benefits. Um, and the research is very clear that you do. Uh, while it might be at a lower intensity, um, you still are getting that moderate or vigorous physical activity that doctors recommend we get. And we find that e-bike owners are actually using their bikes more and uh, traveling farther on them. So there is a great health benefit. Dr. Dill, thank you so much for your time today. Um, I am a uh, AAAS uh, member uh, of uh, science and a, a journalist on the AAAS side. So I so appreciate your willingness to come on the program today and talk to us a little bit about the, the innovation around e-bike and, uh, and e-bike world. Uh, we're very appreciative to, to learn of all of these kinds of things. So thank you very much for your time. How do we, just one final question, how do we continue to get people as excited and as enthusiastic as I am and you are about the subject of e-bikes? <laughs> well, I think that enthusiasm, what I've seen is a lot of it is um, personal networking, you know, talking to people. My experience with e-bike owners is that they love to share and they love to talk with people about their e-bikes and share that fun, which is something we found in our research is a lot of e-bike owners just say it is fun uh, to ride an e-bike. And I think that's really important. And there's, a, there's a lot of science that shows us when people are enjoying how they travel, it's going to impact their overall well-being. And I think it's really important to tell those stories and to get away from some of these um, biases uh, from some people who say, you know, it's cheating. Because what we found is, you know, over 20% of e-bike owners tell us that they wouldn't be able physically to ride a standard bicycle. And so it is opening up all sorts of other possibilities for them to get places and engage outdoors and get that activity. Well, uh, Dr. Jennifer Dill, it's, it's been a lot of fun talking to you. And here's hoping that I'll, I'll see you out on the trail on our e-bikes and I'll, I'll wave and give you a thumbs up. But I'm so grateful for your, uh, you know, all the research that you're doing on this subject and for the time that I've had with you. Thanks so much. Congrats on this work and this research. And please come back and talk to us more about this subject. I know our audience is going to be really interested in it. All right. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it.